Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Natus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In previous videos, we talked about Clostridium tetani, Clostridium botulinum, Clostridium perfringens. Today, we'll talk about Clostridium difficile, continuing the previous series. As we have discussed, the disease caused by C. difficile before. Today, we'll talk about the diagnosis and treatment of C. diff colitis. Now, let's get started. Please watch these videos in order. Clostridium difficile is a gram-positive rod. Spore-forming? Yeah. Aerobic? No. Motile? Yeah. Clostridium difficile produces two famous toxins. Toxin A is intertoxin. Toxin B is cytotoxin. What's the classic definition of clostridia? Here it is. Do we have some problems with the definition? Yes, we do. Why are Clostridia such a big deal to human beings? Because they are everywhere around us, because they can make spores, they can produce toxins, and they can grow even when there is no oxygen. Please pause and review. What are the diseases that can be caused by Clostridium difficile? First of all, many people are asymptomatic. It's called asymptomatic carriage or asymptomatic colonization. Disease-wise, we can have the mild gastroenteritis, which is self-limiting watery diarrhea, or we can have the severe, deadly pseudomembranous colitis and toxic megacolon. Tell me about the toxins. As we have talked about before, we have toxin A, intertoxin that damages the brush border, and toxin B, the cytotoxin that damages the Cy2 skeleton. Moreover, there is binary toxin and surface layer proteins. Just because you have the bacteria in your gut doesn't necessarily mean that you will get sick. Just because you have the C. diff toxins in your gut and in your stool doesn't necessarily mean that you have the signs and symptoms of the disease. Any antibiotic can precipitate pseudomembranous colitis, especially clindamycin, tetracyclines, aminopenicillins, estreonam, cephalosporins, etc. Why do antibiotics do this? Because they alter the normal intestinal flora. They kill some of your flora, making it easy for C. diff to grow and multiply. This is the overgrowth of C. diff that was already in your gut. Or you can acquire exogenous C. diff that was not already in your gut because antibiotics messed up with your immunity. How can we manage C. diff colitis? Other antibiotics, the three modes of transportation, the metro, the van, and the FedEx truck. Signs and symptoms of C. diff colitis include abdominal pain that is crampy, diarrhea that is watery, temperature that is high, leukocytosis that is high, biopsy will show the whitish grayish necrotic pseudomembrane, complications, toxic megacolon, the patient is very sick in the ICU with fever, high leukocytosis, low blood pressure, abdominal pain, altered mental status. The patient appears, quote, toxic, close quote, huge colon on abdominal imaging. How can we diagnose it? By detecting the toxin in the stool, not the bacteria. I'm talking about detecting the toxins. Toxin A is intertoxin and toxin B, the cytotoxin, in your stool. How come? How can we do it? See the next slide. How can we manage it? The three modes of transportation, the metro, the van, and the FedEx truck. When it comes to Vanco, always use it orally for C. diff colitis. Never give intravenous vancomycin if you're planning to treat C. diff colitis. Let's elaborate on diagnosis. Clinically speaking, we're looking for what? The toxins in the stool, not the bacteria, the toxins. But hey, medicosis, what if I found the bacteria in the stool of the patient? Does this confirm the disease? No, it confirms colonization, does not confirm the disease. How can I confirm the disease? You need history, physical exam, signs and symptoms, and uh, the detection of toxins in the stool. Not the bacteria, but its toxins. Toxin A is intertoxin, and toxin B is cytotoxin. So look at the poop of your patient. Did you find the bacteria? Yes, this confirms colonization. If you detect toxins, this confirms the disease, known as C. diff colitis. If you found your toxins, if your patient is sick, if the colon is huge, and the patient has altered mental status, high fever, low blood pressure, this is toxic megacolon. So you need the clinical picture and lab results. What kind of lab results? The presence of toxins in the stool. What kind of toxins? The C. diff toxins. Toxin A and toxin B. How can I detect the toxins in the stool sample? We have many options. Number three is the best. One, 
you can do in vivo cytotoxicity assay. Basically, you try to do some tissue culture and neutralizing antibodies against the toxin. When the toxin reacts with the antibodies against the toxin, boom, you have confirmed the presence of toxins. You can also do some commercially available amino assays. They are not so sensitive. And the best is number three, detect the genes that code for the proteins, i.e. toxins, of the nasty Clostridium difficile bacteria. How can I detect the genes? Nucleic acid amplification tests, such as PCR, polymerase chain reaction. Look for the genes of the bacteria that code for the toxins of the bacteria C. diff. For the Gisillian's thyme, we are not looking for the bacteria. We're looking for the bacterial toxins in the patient's stool, in a patient who has clinical signs and symptoms and relevant medical history. Period. End of issue. How can we manage pseudomembranous enterocolitis? The three modes of transportation, the metro, nidazole, the van, comycin, and the FedEx truck, fidoxamycin. We give metronidazole for mild to moderate cases. We give vancomycin for severe cases. Oral or IV, vanco, only oral. Never give IV vanco if you're trying to treat pseudomembranous colitis. Why not? Because IV vanco will go to your blood, not to your gut. If it goes to your blood, it will never achieve the minimum therapeutic concentration in your gut sufficient to kill the nasty C. diff. But when you give vanco orally, it goes to your mouth, then esophagus, then stomach, then intestines. This will achieve the minimum therapeutic concentration necessary to kill the C. diff and to punch it in the gut. No pun intended. Hey, medicosis, you said vanco for severe cases. Can you define severity, please? Yes, very high fever, high leukocytosis, low albumin, high creatinine. Medicosis, uh, my patient has diarrhea because of C. diff colitis. Should I give anti-diarrheal medications? Shut up. This will not clear the bacteria. This will not get rid of the toxins. What the flip are you doing with your life? Um, hey, medicosis, uh, the patient is so sick. Uh, blood pressure is low. The patient is in shock. There are signs and symptoms of alias and megacolon. What should I do? Do not give just one antibiotic. You should combine oral vancomycin with intravenous metronidazole. So to recap, oral metronidazole is for mild to moderate cases. IV metro plus oral vanco is for severe cases. Okay, medicosis tried all of this, nothing seems to work. Fecal microbiota transplant is an option. The poop shake. We give the patient poop, stool, from another person. Why? Because the other person's stool contains normal bacteria flora that lives in the gut. This normal bacteria flora will now come and live in our patient's gut to crowd out the nasty Clostridium difficile and to restore the normal balance of the microbiome. Medicosis, help me, it's an emergency. The patient is severely sick, nothing is working. Fever, altered mental status, very high leukocytic count, very high serum lactate. What should I do? Surgery emergency colectomy right now. If the patient has colitis, the surgical treatment is colectomy, removal of the colon. Let's review Clostridium difficile from Picmonic. Clostridium difficile. Clostridium, here's a classroom. Difficile, differential equations. Is a gram positive? Here is the angel. Bacillus, here is the rod. Anaerobe, the ant in a robe. Risk factors include antibiotics like clindamycin, cleaning mice, and ampicillins, amplifier pencils. Clostridium difficile produces two famous toxins, toxin A, apple, and toxin B, the bee. Toxin A damages the brush border. It's an enterotoxin. But toxin B is Psi 2, side toe toxin that damages the actin destroys the cytoskeleton of your enterocytes. Signs and symptoms of the disease include diarrhea, here are the toilets, pseudomembranous colitis, somo, man, bra, toxic megacolon, and the treatment is the modes of transportation. You have the metro, you have the van, and the FedEx truck, metronidazole, vancomycin, and fidoxomycin. Don't forget the fecal, microbiota transplant. More doozy mnemonics like these are to be found on Picmonic. The link is in the description.
If you like this video, you will enjoy my antibiotics course. It will teach you about clindamycin, ampicillin, tetracycline, the other antibiotics, antifungals, antivirals, and antiparasitic medications. Download today at medicosisperfectionalist.com. You want to learn more about surgical topics like colectomy for toxic megacolon and pseudomembranous colitis? I have a surgery high yields course. To learn more about other emergencies like drowning, acute respiratory distress syndrome, the arrhythmias, the toxicology, etc., I have an emergency medicine high yields course also on my website. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Natus, where medicine makes perfect sense.